Hey, what's going on, everybody? I just want to make this video to let you know that I'm a podcast first. A lot of people email the show asking when we're going to upload a show because we haven't done one in a while. We do one every week. In fact, we do a free one every week and we do a member show every week. And sometimes we do a bonus segment every week. We do many shows a week. It's just we don't always upload to YouTube because YouTube takes a lot of time that sometimes I don't have. Recently, I haven't had a lot of time. So if you want to hear the show on a weekly basis, all the new shows I always come out with every week, make sure you tune into the podcast stream and the podcast podcast stream can be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any podcast playing app that you so desire. So go ahead and check it out if you want to keep up to date with the confessionals. Merkel Media. Let's go. This was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave, and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. Well, the giant moves. He's got a spear in one hand, and he's running really fast, and spears... Dan holds him up like this. Somebody else, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blow his head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reached my hand into this bush and I touch air. Couldn't breathe and I couldn't move because I know I'm seeing a monster. Everybody, you're listening to The Confessionals. I am your host, Tony Merkel. Thank you for being here. If you've had an encounter or a story you'd like to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is theconfessionalspodcast at gmail.com. That's theconfessionalspodcast at gmail.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the connection section and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me. Just get a hold of me. Now let's get into the Art Bell iTunes five-star ratings and reviews. If you go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating and review... You get a shout out on the following week's show. And this week's shout outs is Melody Audrey, E.R. Hunter, Forrest Sills, A Skeptic Illis, Joker 49326, Kid Glock 24, Real J Luna, Stay Gold Hex, and Glasgow Will from the UK. Thank you very much for going to iTunes and leaving that five star rating and review. You know as well as I do, it helps the show out a ton. Now let's move on to the Patreon shout outs. These are people who go to patreon.com forward slash the confessionals and sign up to be monthly supporters of the show on patreon.com. So this week's shout outs is. Beth P, Dylan R, and Natalie G. So thank you very much for going to patreon.com forward slash the confessionals and signing up to become a patron. Now this week's show, we have Angelo coming on and Angelo shares three different stories that happened to him throughout his life, but they are phenomenal. One's a time traveler story. One's an alien story. One's a Bigfoot story. They're all great. So really sit back and enjoy this one. Grab some popcorn, grab a soda, grab a beer. I don't care what you grab. Just really sit back and relax because this one is a good one. Let's get to it right now. Okay, tonight we have Angelo coming on. Angelo is actually a patron of mine. How you doing, Angelo? Pretty good. Pretty good. Thank you. Yourself? Oh, I'm doing great, man. So uh, before we get into all the, the, the good stuff you got going on tonight, because, I mean, you, you have a lot of experiences throughout your life that really range all over the place. And I, to, to be honest with you, when I read your email, I was a little envious of one of the experiences, and we're going to get into that one right away. But uh, why don't you share with people how you found the show? Because I just think it's really cool that, uh, that how it happened. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, my son knows that I'm into paranormal, and him and his buddies listen to your show as they ride into work, and at times during work. So my son, after hearing through these shows and the way you uh, help the people along and the way they present everything, uh, he told me about it. So I looked into it. I enjoyed the show so much. I became a patron. Yeah. And I think it's so, really cool because, I mean, I know that there's people that they actually 
make it a point to sit down on a Saturday night when the show drops and they listen to the show with their family. And, uh, you know, you get those emails here and there and stuff. And you just shared that with me before we started the interview. And I was like, man, that's really cool. Like, you know, your, your kid is into the show. He tells you, you get into the show. And that's just, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like, you know, I'm actually doing something here that people are really enjoying and stuff. So uh, I th- thank you for being a patron and thank you for listening to the show. Um, it's my pleasure. I think you guys are doing a lot for the show by helping people out. I appreciate that. I mean, that's that was the whole goal when we started the show to basically lay out people's stories, their experiences, and how they view their experiences. That's a very important mm-hmm. thing to me. I I have my own personal be- opinions and beliefs on things, and you know all that stuff. But I don't want that to limit the people who come on the show. I want people who come on the show to share their experiences on how they view it, whether I agree with it or not. It doesn't matter. I want to have conversation with people who had experiences and I want them to share how they view those experiences. And uh, I, I think that's kind of how, you know, the show is really kind of taken a unique form of its own because I don't, I really don't want to hold people down. I just want people to kind of just share their experiences and how they experienced it. And we'll go from there. So you have uh, the, the most intriguing thing here that I, I've never had an opportunity to talk to somebody that experience something like this. Uh, so we're going to jump in here with your time traveler story. You, you experienced a time traveler. Uh, how did that all unfold? And, and how did you just talk to us about it? What, what happened here? All right. Well, it's pretty amazing. We, we kind of dug at a time traveler because of the clothes the person was wearing. Uh, it was so out of date that it looked like something from the thirties or the forties. From what I got, from what I looked up online, trying to find it. Now I'm I'm at work. Me and my buddies have two other friends with me, and I'm wearing a generator. They actually saw the entity come through the wall. I was staring straight ahead, and I saw it out of my uh, side vision. And they said it looked like it stumbled into our our dimension. And uh, they were looking at it, and they said. You know, whether it stumbled or pushed, I turned around and this thing, so I saw it looking kind of like it's brushing itself off, stands up straight and tall, puts his left hand on his head, holding his hat down, turned to look at us and was startled. Then it looked like a person, like a regular person, with the exception of the clothes. Then he turned around to his left really quick. Put his right hand on top of his head, holding his hat down, and run. And I'm saying, go around the other side of the building. I'll chase him this way. They ran counterclockwise around the building. I ran clockwise around the building. And this is a pretty long, rectangular building. And by the time I got to the corner where I was going to make it, where he turned, he was already into the center. It, 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 the thing that startled me, it looked like he had slinky legs or rubber legs, like he threw them out unnaturally in front of him. And I thought that was totally strange. I'm in pretty good shape, and uh, I can run pretty pretty good. But trying to catch, catch this thing was just, it was just really hard. He turned the corner again. I'm huffing and puffing by this time. Now I turn the corner, and my friends turn the corner, and they're giving me the eyebrows like, did you get it? And I'm looking at it like, no. And now we're looking around. Uh, the doors are locked to the building, so I couldn't go in inside. To our left was an empty parking lot, with the exception of our work vehicles, and that was now down out there, uh, the far end of the building. And to our right was an open field of grass, cut grass, so it was low. And there was nothing. We couldn't find this thing anywhere. It turned the corner and disappeared. And we're looking at each other, scratching our heads, so I said, all right, why don't you guys go this way, continue clockwise, and I'll continue counterclockwise, and we met each other again to our first spot. And we all agreed that we saw something, but what we didn't agree on is exactly what it looked like. So, like, I saw a brown coat wearing a black hat, and the person was wearing black pants. Very dressed up, a long brown trench coat, uh, a dress trench coat. It was in November, so it was a very heavy trench coat. And uh, another person saw a white trench coat with a black hat. And my other buddy saw a white trench coat with a black hat, but it was a woman. 
has acting this happen? Wow. We all saw the same thing, but we don't know exactly what we saw. But we saw it. And then I was thinking afterwards, remember that thing that they had on the internet, the blue dress or the gold dress? Yeah. And then you had Yenny and Lenny or Yentl or something. Laurel and Yenny. That's the one. So maybe we did see all something different, but we did see the same thing on a little, a little bit of different details. But the way it ran, that was the only odd thing about the person, is that it, it ran like it had legs that were made of rubber. And I just thought that was extremely odd. And how it disappeared, I don't know. But that was uh, that's uh, my time travel story. Yeah. But now, we still talk about it today. Oh, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I mean, uh, when you experience something like that with a bunch of people, I don't know why you wouldn't talk about it unless it's one of those things where people, when they see like particularly UFOs or alien type experiences, sometimes people tend to not talk about these things and they act like it just never happened. Like, it's not like they said, Hey, let's not talk about this. It's just, they just never talk about it. They all experience it together. They just don't talk about it. But w- with what you experienced, I would hope that you guys would talk about it. Cause that's crazy, man. Like, so you said that when you saw this, you saw, um, I might have have it off, but like a, a brown trench coat, black hat, and slacks. Uh, I think you said uh, brown slacks or something like that. But everybody black, saw, yeah. everybody saw something. They they all saw something do the same actions, but you all saw whatever it was in a different way. Uh, and I yes. I find that really interesting. And you know, I think about this sometimes, and maybe it's just because I'm a truck driver and I get bored a lot and I come up with crazy ideas. But sometimes I wonder if, like, if we all see colors differently, but we don't really necessarily know that we see it differently because we've always been taught that what we see is red. So, like, I've been taught that red is red for me, but maybe my red is green to you. You know what I mean? And so, mm-hmm. like, yep. I, I sometimes I wonder if, like, I know it sounds crazy, and I'm, I'm sure I'm probably wrong on it. And there's probably some easy scientific reason to why I'm wrong, but and it's not like I believe it. I'm just saying, like, I wonder sometimes if, like, you know, the colors that I see, do other people see the same colors by the same name? Or do we all see different shades of colors differently? It's just we all call it the same because we've been taught that green is green. Whether you see green, you know, does that make sense to you? It makes perfect sense to me because I've thought about that myself sometimes where if I had to see through your eyes, I mean, I might go totally insane because it's not what I'm accustomed to seeing. And if you're taught the same colors, but with a different hue to it, of course, we're going to see different things, but we're taught that that is what we're seeing. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Now, the thing is, after we saw this, we went back to that wall. It's a it's a old-fashioned cement uh, stone wall. It's like stones are thrown like they had a stone, they had a platform, and threw the rocks in there, then just poured cement into the, you know, into the form, let it dry, and this was a solid wall. So I didn't actually see it like come through. My buddy said they came through like if somebody pushed it, or if it stumbled into our say dimension. And when it stood up and it saw us, it kind of smiled, but it wasn't afraid of us. But it did want it to be away from us in some aspect. That we all can, you know, it was just unusual way. This whole thing goes on. And I'm thinking it's like, damn, if I could just catch this, I've got to solve the, all these mysteries I've been, you know, questioning in my head. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that's that was, all I could think of. Was that the reasoning for your motivations to chase after this person or whatever it was? Because, I mean, that, that was, that was some, the first thing that I thought I was like, dang, these guys got some balls. I mean, like something just came out of a wall and y'all, you're just going to chase after it. I was like, dang. Uh, but, I mean, I guess. You know, it all depends on how you're thinking about it in the moment and stuff. And you, and clearly, you guys saw something different. I mean, each one of you saw something different. So the intimidation factor of it might be different for each one of you. It's possible. It's possible. I'm thinking that it's um, if it was something that we could physically catch and hold on to that and ask a question, where'd you come from? How'd you do this? Some of the answers of of you know the mysteries that we have would be solved, possibly. So I was just, I had nothing to lose. I said, I'm catching this thing. I don't care. I'm running. And uh, my other buddies, they were just so excited to see it. And I was, they saw my excitement and they ran. You go this way and I'll go this way. And 
And that's where we all got into the uh, into the moment. Pretty cool deal. Pretty cool deal. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, so you're talking about this thing coming out of the wall and it's stumbling. And in my mind, I picture something almost like in a movie. I think there's actually a movie... Now, I'm not the guy to talk to about movies. I, I don't know movies from anything, but it wasn't there a movie called Jumper or something where the guy like literally jumped for like he was a he was a time traveler or something, but he didn't need a machine. He just kind of like jumped like he had this ability that he could, you know, teleport kind of thing. Do you think that's something that, that, that could have been happening there? Like somebody actually just they were they were teleporting through time, not necessarily using a time machine. That's a possibility uh, not having all the answers. Um, I would think that. He might have been in a different time, dressed in the way he had to dress, to so he wasn't noticed. Jump into our time, and then jumped into another time when he turned the corner because he wasn't there. The doors are locked, and I, there's nothing that that was an open field. That even with the way this person was running, uh, as strangely as it was, I think with the distance we would have saw it running into the woods. Um, and the parking lot was pretty empty, except with the exception of our work vehicle. So that was a hell of a distance that he had to run, but we would have saw it. So, and so he had to maybe time walk into another dimension. So without a machine to do it, it's possible to do it so quickly. Right. I mean, it's a very curious thing. It's a very curious thing. Uh, and do you think that there's a possible, and I, I, actually, I know the answer to this just about judging by the way you've been talking, but I'm going to ask you the question anyways for the audience's sake. Is it, po- is it possible at all that this was not a time traveler, but simply just a ghostly entity that you saw an apparition of? Um, no, I think it was a solid person. I really think it was a solid um it's just because the way it saw us and the way it ran, and then when I turned the corner, it was still visible. It didn't disappear at that point. It was still a visible entity. I think when it turned the corner, because of the speed that he was running, he had time to do whatever he did to get out of danger. I think if it was a ghost that I was chasing, it might have faded, or we would have saw it fade. This thing was just totally solid. When I saw it, now I, again, there's, I think there's different dimensions. I mean, it's not to get religious, but even in the Bible, there's where angels appear and disappear. Yeah. So there's 100%. definitely other realms, uh, you know, of, of reality that we're not totally aware of, or maybe aware of, but not um, uh, sensitive to on that aspect. So when this time traveler jumped out, it saw us and said, Okay, I'm out of here. It's like exit stage left, and off he went. So I think this is a solid object. Okay, I mean, I absolutely agree with you when it, when it comes to the whole idea of interdimensional beings and things like that. Like they're clear for me as somebody who does believe what the Bible says. There clearly is other dimensions because of what you just said about the angels being able to appear. For, in, a, in a place that they weren't, you know, and the, the the best example of that is the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They get thrown into the furnace. There's three dudes. They throw into the furnace. They look in the furnace. They're like, "Yo, there's four guys in there. Who's the fourth one?" It was an angel, and he was and the angel was protecting them. And so, like, the, the, clearly, like according to the Bible, at least there are inter- interdimensional beings called angels, and they are able to do that. So if they're able to do that, then clearly there are other dimensions. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I do find that fascinating. Do you recall ever hearing uh, this this person, I'll just call it a person. Uh, do, you, do you ever recall hearing this person like running, like hearing their feet hit the ground or anything like that? <laughs> it's funny you should say that. With this person, no. When I had the other sighting, I definitely heard it. And I felt it. But with this uh, time traveler, uh, no, I didn't see it. I mean, the only confirmation I got which was that it was so real is the, how quick it ran. I think if it was a ghost, maybe it would have floated or uh, somehow uh, just to move the more freely uh, than, than struggling to run the way it was running. Uh, but I didn't hear any kind of a footsteps. I didn't make any kind of a sound. 
It just wanted to get out of there, but it wasn't afraid of us either. Just as a point, it just didn't want to be seen. So that was uh, that was pretty interesting. So you just made a point here. Uh, why why do you think that it wasn't afraid of you? I mean, it's not like it told you that it wasn't afraid of you, but you got the sense that it wasn't afraid of you. It just didn't want to be seen. Well, a couple of couple of clues uh, tipped me off. Now, again. I wasn't staring at it. I was staring um, towards my gaze. So let's see, I'm in the back of the building, so I'm kind of like looking, if I had to, towards the north end of the building. My friends were on my left, so they saw it come through the wall. I think if it was afraid of us, it would have taken its time to brush itself off and straighten out its, its coat. You, you, you get me? So it put its hands on its hat to try to hold it down so when it was running, the hat wouldn't fall off and saw us. It stood up straight like it's, I don't want to say smile, but almost like amused, more uh, what I would say what it looked like. And then put his right hand, switched, put his right hand. Now, this takes time to do that. So he was really afraid of us. I think it might have just ran, regardless of making sure his hat was still on his head when he ran. Are you following me? Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's why I don't really think it was afraid. It might have been in other situations where it had to deal with people. So it wasn't overly concerned about our feelings, whether we want to catch it or not, because he knew we couldn't. Maybe. I'm, I'm throwing that out there. No, I mean, you saw him jump into your dimension, your reality, and you chase after him. You can't, you can't find him. You didn't catch him. I mean, it's a clear, clearly to me, at least, it's safe to say that it's very possible whatever it was, jumped into another dimension or jumped out of our dimension, at least. Uh, and, I mean, you saw it happen coming in, so why wouldn't it happen going out? Correct. That's that's just the way I'm looking at it. So, I mean, whether, it, again, used the machine um, or it just had the ability to manipulate time to, uh, to, to open its escape, it was, it was pretty quick. Again, like I said, by the way I ran around the corner looking at it in the peculiar way that this thing was running, it wasn't really struggling to run. It was just running to run to get into a safe spot. And then when it did get into a safe spot, because it, it went into the front of the building before we could even get to that point, it disappeared at that point. Now, a few seconds later, we're around the building. We bump into each other, me, my friend and I, and we're like, boom. What happened? Did you catch it? I didn't catch nothing. Did you? No, nope, I didn't catch anything either. I was scratching my hands, looking around the building, checking the door a few times. If not me, then my other two buddies were. Doors locked. So where did it go? And it's just one of those peculiar things. You just have to chalk it up to, you know, it's a, a, a phenomenon. That's what I mean. Yeah, I guess you could say that it's a phenomenon, <laughs> uh, to say the least. Uh, that that's just very fascinating. When I read your email months ago, I, I was like, "Holy crap!" I definitely got to talk to this guy because <laughs> I was just so fascinated to hear your story. And uh, I'm glad we talk and we're talking because uh, it, that story did not let me down at all. If you're listening to this podcast right now, chances are you enjoy mysterious things, things that you don't quite understand and you're trying to understand them and figure them out. Well, let me introduce to you a new type of mystery, a more true crime mystery, introducing to you Hunt a Killer. It could easily turn into your new favorite obsession. Hunt a Killer is a monthly subscription where you become a detective immersed in a murder mystery. Each month, a fictional serial killer will send you a cryptic clue, objects, and letters that you can actually use to solve the crime in real time. It's so interactive and convincing that it looks and feels very, very real. And it actually comes in a nice sleek box with all the clues inside. It looks cool and makes you feel like you're about to open a mystery. And it's not just something that you can do just by yourself. So say you're sick in the house and you have nowhere to go. Hunt a Killer is perfect for you to pass time, but it's also great experiences for team building things. Also for family nights, you get the kids together, your family comes over, have a little party and you get together and play this game of Hunt a Killer. It's a fantastic brain exercise. So right now, just for our listeners, you can go to huntakiller.com slash confessionals for 10% off your first box. They only accept 200 members 
members per day. So hurry and take advantage of this offer. That's huntakiller.com slash confessionals for 10% off your first box. Huntakiller.com slash confessionals. And while I have you here, let me tell you about the Robinhood app. Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission-free. They actually strive to make financial services work for everyone, not just the wealthy. Other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, but Robinhood doesn't charge commission fees, trade stocks, and keep all the profits. And that's what I'm talking about. These other apps that I dabble with do those kind of things, and it's one of my biggest pet peeves. And I'm really glad that Robinhood doesn't do these things. And when you open the app, it's very easy to use. It's clean looking. It's not one of these trash apps that you're going to download, and then 10 minutes later, you're deleting it off your phone because you couldn't understand how to even use the stinking thing. So Robinhood is giving listeners a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build your portfolio. So sign up at confessionals.robinhood.com. That's confessionals.robinhood.com. This is Wes with Sasquatch Chronicles, and you're listening to The Confessionals with Tony Merkel. You, you tell me that you, you see this jumper, this time traveler, and things like that, and then you told me, you followed that up with the fact that you have seen interdimensional beings, and in my mind at first, I was like, well, yeah, of course you saw interdimensional beings, you just told me that, but uh, when I when I stopped myself, I was like, okay, so he's... So you saw something else other than this jumper that's an interdimensional being. Is that correct? Yes. This one's actually a pretty unusual story. And um, just to get my composure for it, I was recently divorced. And so there was a time period where I wasn't seeing anybody. I'm at work and I meet this girl. And she's extremely attractive. She brings me down to her house, you know, to visit. Why don't you hang out over here? I said, yeah, all right. So I go over there. And then everything that made sense didn't make sense anymore. And this is what I was still pondering in my head on the events that occurred. So just to let you know, this girl was a very attractive girl. and. Uh, I would say she'd be a 10. Not to put, you know, label people, but she was a very attractive girl. And she invited me down to her house, and I went there. We had a couple of beers, and we're watching TV. And all of a sudden, something hit the roof of the house, like a rock. And I thought, all right, well, that's strange. And a few seconds later, another rock hits the side of the house this time. Then um, I went outside, looked around to see if there was any kids. I didn't see any kids. When we went back, I sat in here on something peculiar, which was birds. Now it's about 11.30 at night. I didn't think birds were out at 11.30 at night. So I said, well, that's strange. So I asked her. I says, uh, do you normally have this happen? She goes, once in a while. She says, I think it's my boyfriend just playing a joke on me. You know, he probably knows my parents aren't around. so." He's over here just to kind of like, you know, bust some beans, have some fun with his friends. And I said, all right, I'll go with that. And I still hear the birds. And then every about a half hour later, another rock hits the house, another rock hits the roof. I start getting a little annoyed. All right. She goes to the back. I think I'm going to go out and have a cigarette. I've since quit. But um, I went outside, had a cigarette, and I got a laser pointer in my pocket. Um, so I'm thinking, where are these guys? They gotta be something. There must be kids or something's going on over here. I couldn't figure it out. Then I saw some lights out in the woods. Like, um, it wasn't a firefly. Being an electrician, I know lights. It wasn't a firefly. It wasn't a flashlight because it didn't illuminate anything. It was just kind of like a, like a light that stayed on, but it didn't illuminate. And then it would go off. I just thought this was the strangest thing. So she's not around. I think I'm going to take a walk. And I started walking towards the lights. And I start saying, okay, look, 
I don't want any noise. I'll call the cops. I got my laser pointer on. I got a laser pointer. You know, like it's going to do a lot. And I'm thinking, these kids got to be here somewhere. I must have been about 100 feet from the house. And then the light, the beam of the laser broke. So I must have hit something. It wasn't like I hit a tree. It was just like a different, I can't explain it. Like it disappeared. Like the laser beam disappeared for a second. Something absorbed it. Then uh, I started looking. My eyes started adjusting to the darkness. And I looked. And there's these things. I want to say tall grays, for lack of a better. But they weren't really grays. They were tall something. And I'm looking at it. And I can't believe what I'm looking at. Then I heard a snap to my right. And I look. And there's another one. And then I look. And there's another one. And I look, and there's another one. And I see, like, four of them. I said, holy shit. I said, this ain't good. But they weren't afraid of me. They were like, it was almost like you saw, like, a gang of kids in an alleyway. You know, you took a, a, a wrong turn. You see these kids, and they're over there talking, and you have to bump into them. And they're looking at you like, yeah, what do you want? What are you going to do? That's the way they were looking at me. And I'm just thinking to myself, this is not good. And I walked backwards. And I had the laser pointer, and I kept saying, I don't want to call the cops. I said, I just don't want any trouble. I just want to be here. I'm just trying to have a good time. And I'm walking backwards. And they're looking at me. They're not even aggressive. They're not moving, but they're staring at me. They're, well, actually, they are moving, but they're not moving towards me, in other words. It's kind of like readjusting their bodies. And I got to a far enough space uh, that I felt comfortable. I turned around. I went into that house. I threw cold water on my face. I, I I couldn't I couldn't comprehend what I what I just experienced. Now she says, "Where have you been?" I said, "I was just out in the backyard." I said, "Do you know what's out back there?" She goes, "Yeah, it's probably my boyfriend." I said, "It's not you. Don't you know?" I says, "I just saw something back there. That I can't explain." She didn't take it seriously. So I had another beer. I sat down. Something needs to go for the house. I said, Jesus. You know, and uh, I didn't sleep that night. Didn't do anything. I just stayed up, watched the movies until the dawn, and then it was the birds again. The birds kept going off. Like they were talking to one another. And then finally, she fell asleep. Sun came up. I get in my car and left, but I never went back. And the reason why I'm saying that is because she's a very attractive girl. She was very nice, you know, but she was confused why I wouldn't go back to her house. And there was every reason for me to go back there, but I wouldn't dare. Uh-uh. Not the way, uh, not for that experience. And that's basically what happened. I can't explain it other than they were like interdimensional beings because it was just something Again, they weren't grays, but they almost had gray features. And if I had to give it a size, um, being pretty good with measurements, uh, just speak once again for the field of my trade, I'd say they're about nine feet, each of them. They had to be about nine feet. I had a feeling you would uh, say that. Really? Yeah. I, 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 other people must have seen this. I, I literally was getting ready to write down nine feet as in my notes. Jeez. You know, and, and I think about it, and I had to think about it because I think, well, I'm going to talk to talk about it today, and and even so now I feel jittery just thinking about what I saw. But it's the damn birds, like eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, one o'clock. We still hear them, but not all the time. They would chirp once in a while. They would chirp once in a while, and then you hear the rock. You know, you, you hit hit the house or hit the roof, and I couldn't have been her boyfriend's busting chops. I'll tell you right now just couldn't be it had to be those entities doing something you know and, and how long i was gone for i couldn't say because she said where were you like i was gone for a long period of time i didn't think i was gone that long i'm thinking like five minutes because i didn't walk that far from the house you know so i'm thinking about five minutes but the way she was talking maybe it was longer but i didn't still days about what was going on i didn't think of putting the time or like we were watching TV, what TV show was on when I left, or what TV show was on when I came back. I didn't put any of that together because I was just so 
dazed about what I what I just experienced. It was really baffling. I mean, I still think about it today. I said, and you know what? Today, I almost like to call her up and go down to her house because I Google map it sometimes. The area, the location, the woods area, what kind of woods, what it's next to, is there anything adjacent to it that's you know, caves or anything that's like that? And it's really nothing out of the ordinary. There is with in Rhode Island Forest of Ross, which is a lot of woods and goes right up into Connecticut, but from Connecticut, Massachusetts, up to uh, the Great Lakes. So, I mean, it's uh, a lot of woods back here in New England. Not as developed as people think. When, you, when I look at it at the night vision, you know, New England at night, see what kind of lights there is. But this thing was totally bizarre. Totally bizarre. I mean, it sounds like it. Uh, it definitely sounds like it. Uh, what you just described to me, uh, I was totally engulfed in as you were telling me. Uh, these beings that you saw that were, you know, roughly nine feet tall. Now, you said that they weren't grays, but they had that kind of look to them. Do you mean like they weren't grays as in they didn't look like the color gray? Or are you talking about like they didn't look like they were gray alien entities? They didn't look like the gray alien entities. But they had a long facial feature, large eyes, thin body. Um, I didn't make I wasn't as meticulous as making references of what it actually looked like to to say like this is what it is. Not that we have a catalog, you know, on Google to say, okay, this is what you know, nine feet tall, this alien three things, blah blah blah. We really don't have anything like that. So we have to go by, you know, an assumption of what this thing could possibly be. And I say it's interdimensional because it had features as a nose and a mouth, not a very large, but just thin, but it didn't, but it still had a head, a body, two arms, two legs, you know, as, as far as, um, as far as the structure is, you know, uh, so that's, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's totally a strange thing that I saw. And once again, it wasn't really threatened by me by being I got a laser pointer like what am I going to do they just travel like thousands of miles <laughs> you know, I, oh this guy's got a laser pointer ooh, ooh, ooh. watch <laughs> out guys he's going to focus in the eye with it you know <laughs> so that's uh, that's what I think I think there's more interdimensional beings than there are extraterrestrials personally because I'm thinking that um, even science I heard a, a blurb in a news article and it might have been on uh a different paranormal show that uh, I was watching on YouTube, that they say science thinks that there's more chances of finding interdimensional beings than there are extraterrestrial beings because of so many dimensions that are closer to us that the veil hasn't been lifted, but science is working on doing that. Maybe these beings have developed a way of lifting that veil for them just to be seen long enough for us to witness it. It's, uh... But the thing is... Were they the ones throwing the rocks? Were they the ones that were? And if they weren't, then who was? Who was making that whistle? Like, were they the ones around the woods making the lights? And if they, if they weren't, were the people making the lights see those things? This is the things that I, I keep rushing through my head all the time because I'm trying to rationalize what happened. No, you're absolutely right. Uh the the things that happened during this experience that you had, there are a lot of parallels, and and there's so many. Uh, my mind is running a million miles an hour. I mean, you see the lights, uh, the rock throwing. I mean, you know, I know you know that rock throwing is closely associated with the idea of Bigfoot. Like people talk about rock yep. throwing happening with Bigfoot in the woods or even against people's homes. Uh, the fam the famous TV show from the History Channel years ago, Monster Quest, they had a show on uh, an episode on there where they talked about uh, a cabin. Oh, uh, it's drawn. I'm drawing a blank. I know. I know my, everybody's probably that's listening and probably like, you know what it is. I can't think of it. Um, anyways, there, there, there was this cabin, they were investigating it and there was rocks thrown onto the roof at night while they were investigating it. It was on camera. Uh, but 
it's a very closely associated thing to the Bigfoot thing. Now, you didn't see Bigfoot. I, I, from what you're describing, that's not Bigfoot. Uh, what you're describing is something that I would call, uh, on a, at least on a generic level, extraterrestrial. Uh, I know you said you're more interdimensional, but I'm just saying, like, what you described sounds like an extraterrestrial. It, actually, what you described, I heard um, another woman describe a very similar thing to what you just described on uh, Sasquatch Chronicles. Really? Yeah, yeah. I think it was a member. Wow. I think it was a member's episode, but it wasn't. What she described was not a Bigfoot, uh, but it was very closely. Uh, related to what you just described and this woman drew what she saw and it was posted on the website when i looked at the picture on the website it reminded me exactly of what is in the movie signs do you did you ever see the movie signs oh yeah of course so awesome movie. the entity when they show that the aliens are invading and all that stuff and the, they're watching the tv and they capture it on the news of uh, the, the, the gray alien walking through a town, they pause it on the TV and you can see this full body apparition of this alien, this tall alien like creature. That's what she drew. That's what she said she saw. And I, it, it, my jaw dropped and I told Wes this and Wes is like, I, I guess I, I don't think Wes ever saw the movie cause he didn't connect the dots, but like, uh, I, I was, my jaw was dropped. And so what you're describing to me in my mind, I'm painting that as an image. Am I accurate in that or not? No, yeah, it's a bit of the movie science. It's not so. It, it, it's not so far fetched. There, there could be a strong similarity. Uh, these entities. Now, again, there was no ship. It was like you know, I, I saw a flash of light and I was being up towards. There was nothing like that. They were just standing there. I mean, it, if I had to draw a cartoon, you put a cigarette in their hand, saying like, "What's up, Doc?" You know. You know, it's your problem. You know, they were just really relaxed. But what I'm saying is, um, if these entities were like related to a Bigfoot, could Bigfoot have been just been roaming around and they were out there? You know, kind of like you let your dog run around. Let your dog run around, do its business. And then the dog comes back. Could they have let Bigfoot out, run around, do its biggest business, and then Bigfoot comes back? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just try to put a little humor to it. It could it one be affected to the other? One's connected to the other somehow. I don't know. I, I know, that's, that's a, and it's it's a very uncomfortable thing for people to start thinking like this. Uh, I over the last year, year and a half, I've really started noticing through conversations with people and stuff that there are a lot of parallels between these different entities that people are. I'll just call them entities. I'm including Bigfoot, aliens, ghosts, whatever, dog man. We'll just call it all generic entities. There's a lot of parallels between these things. Uh, people say that Bigfoot has red glowing eyes. Well, you hear that about demonic things too. You also hear about that with uh, dogman things. And then you hear about the rock throwing that you just talked about. Well, we hear about that with the Bigfoot stuff. There's a lot of things here paralleling. Like you saw the lights in the woods. Now, the lights in the woods, did it, did, were the lights independent lights or were they, did they seem like they were part of a craft? No, nope, they were independent lights because I thought there were, again, at least four, maybe five kids with flashlights out in the woods because they were moving roughly about four feet off the ground. That I can verify because I had my wits with me at that particular point when I'm trying to follow the lights. Um, they were, let's say, one person, one light would wander off to the left, the other one would just sway back and forth like it was just just swaying back and forth, not really doing anything. And then there'd be another one that just be kind of bouncing, and another one just blink on, blink off, blink on, blink off. Like they each had their own personality. So that's what made me think it was flashlights more than a craft. Well, in, in retrospect, you know? Yeah. And I mean, so you said you think there's roughly four, right? Four lights. Uh, yes. And you said that you saw four entities, right? Correct. I mean, again, there could have been more, but I wasn't really to save the count. You know what I mean? That sure. wasn't my job. My job was to get out of there. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And so uh, the the numbers match up there. Doesn't mean that that's all there was or whatever. But at least the numbers match up there. We hear that these lights are closely associated with Bigfoot sightings as well on people's properties. Uh, that, really. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you listen to Sasquatch Chronicles or not, but Wes interviews people 
on their Bigfoot encounters. And one of the things that he started making connections with is that when people have these things on their property, they're experiencing these things on their properties. More often than not, if he were to say to them, hey, before or after you saw the Bigfoot, do you see lights? Most of the time people say yes. And they're like surprised that he even asked that question because uh, they weren't going to bring it up, you know? Uh, And so it's like, what's going on here? Now you saw lights, but you didn't see Bigfoot. Uh, And so, and I've seen lights in the woods myself. A lot of people see these lights in the woods. Do, are these lights an independent topic away from aliens and Bigfoot? You'd like to think so until you start seeing the fact that people see these lights right after or before they see something else. And so uh, I, I don't, I don't have an answer for it, but you know, people like you who have these experiences and stuff, that's why I said in the beginning of the show, it's so important for people like you to come forward and share these experiences because that's really the best way I can imagine us learning about these things because uh, there's no books written on this as far as like factual things. Like you can take it as a textbook and study it and know the truth. Like there are nothing, there's nothing like that, you know? And so witness testimony is the best thing that we have right now. Mm. The, um, the other part that I'm curious with is the birds. Usually birds aren't out that late at night. At least, not that I'm aware of. And you know, I've been camping out in my time, and I've heard uh, owls. That's one thing. Okay, there's a bird right there. But these are almost like songbirds. That was peculiar to me. That's why I thought, I says, what? It? She goes, well, it's probably him using a code to talk to his friends. Like, if she had to know what was going on, but just was totally oblivious to it. That's the only thing I'm confused. It's like, I want to call up. It's like, Blue Shaker, what the hell's in your head? What's actually going on here? But I think it's just maybe she's just rather not deal with it. That's what I think. But I, I remember the birds. That was the thing that I also found very peculiar. But it'd be like in this spot, and then you hear it off to my right. And I would hear again, maybe in front of me. So I, that's what made me believe that they were talking to one another. But it sounded like a songbird, and and uh, I sound like that's so strange. Birds at night, it's like you know, I'm looking at it, I say, what now? It's eleven thirty at night. The birds out. I don't, I, I don't recall birds being out that late at night, or at least being active. <clears throat> at least being active that late at night, you know. Unless you've heard something, I haven't. No, I, I, but you know, we hear about these experiences. I'm. With your story here, I'm just drawing a lot of parallels here. I, nothing's concrete. Uh, but you do hear of entities, whether it's Bigfoot or something else, mimicking sounds. And I wonder if these things were mimicking bird sounds uh, for whatever reason. I don't know. But uh, so what What you're saying is you feel like she kind of knew what was going on, but she was just choosing to be oblivious to it? Yes. I think so because I've heard other people kind of like from your show, um, some people just in denial. Yeah, so like my best friend, but he doesn't want to talk about it. He's just in denial. Or, you know, so I try to bring it up. My mother doesn't want to hear it. She just goes into a different topic. So I, I, I kind of get that feeling that she must be in that category where she's aware of it. It's too frightening to deal with it. So I'll just ignore it. You find So, I mean... It, that would seem the most logical thing without pressing any issues with her. And again, I would love to call her up just to go down to the place. Now, it's, you know, she's a nice person, too. And she got mad at me. She called me up a few times. How come you don't want to come down? No, I'm going to my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your place is too far out to drive to. So it's just one of those deals. <laughs> you start making up excuses that after a while, you just lose contact with people. So, yeah, man. But, I, I love I love the way you you tell these stories too. By the way, because earlier you were talking about seeing what you were seeing outside, and you're like, "That's strange." And I just the way you said it, I I I couldn't help myself. I was just cracking up because it's just like almost like a comical <laughs> punchline. I was just like, <laughs> but I mean, when you experience yeah. these the, these things and stuff, I mean, sometimes I imagine it's therapeutic. It's just kind of you know, let's let's just relax and try to, you know, recall the story without getting too serious because when you get too serious, you can get worked up. You know what I mean? 
Oh, definitely. So I, I, I keep going back to this story because I have so many questions. Uh, when you went back into the house and she's like, where have you been? And you're like, I was outside, you know, and you didn't feel like that much time had passed. Do you think there was something else going on there? Do you think there was some kind of like missing time where you don't realize that uh, more time had passed than, than you originally thought because something had happened to you out there that, you know, you time had gone on and you just didn't even know it. Uh, in retrospect, yes. Uh, at the moment, I thought everything was just uh, lateral. It, it happened like sequential right there. I, looking back, I think there was missing time. Whether I could ever confirm that through other means, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. But it, what it seems like when I went back there, she was concerned that I was, that I was gone. Which I'm thinking to myself, uh, I'm only a little over here. I mean, I, was, I could have been within sight. Just went outside to have a cigarette. I mean, actually, I don't, think about, I don't even know if I finished it or not, to be honest with you, recalling that. Um, but, you know, it, to me, I was just out about 100 feet from the house, maybe 150 feet from the house. And then, uh, you know, experience with experience, it came back. So it was like five minutes for me. For her, maybe longer. You know, so there could be some missing time there, most probably there, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I just did a show a couple of weeks ago on missing time, and uh, I I had a lady on. I think it was either earlier this year or late last year, and she talked about she's in Canada and she's talking about when she's driving down this road with her friend, like they went into this like time warp kind of thing. It was kind of oh crazy. yeah, I heard that episode. Yeah, yes. I, awesome, awesome. So I mean. That there's people out there that are experiencing these these weird time lapses or whatever you want to call them, whether they're being abducted or whatever. I mean, I've heard interviews. In fact, just this week, I heard an interview with a fellow who, uh, and actually, him. I actually reached out to him, and he's going to be on the show. We're, we're scheduling it out for next month for me to record with him. Uh, he's got a fascinating story. He's been abducted, and he remembers a lot of it. But one of the things, he was abducted when he was a kid, and one of the things they told him is that we're going to take you and you're going to be gone for 20 years. And he's like, no, I can't, I can't be gone that long. And they said, they told him basically, don't worry about it. We're in control of time. And when we bring you back, it's just going to be 15 minutes later. And so for 20 of years of his life, he's, he's going to be recalling his abduction and what he experienced. But when he was returned, it was just 15 minutes later. It's it's a fascinating story, but the people are experiencing these kind of things, you know. So uh, it's just I, I really I'm really glad you shared that story with us tonight because there's so many different facets to what you just shared with us that I think your story is a very prime example of why we need to be open minded about what's going on here because you have a lot of parallels that go into other categories that people don't really want to cross lines a lot of times. And you're doing that tonight. And I think that's uh, really courageous of you to come forward and just share what you experienced, whether people like, Oh, that's impossible. No, it's not impossible. You experienced it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I definitely do. Well, you know, the thing is, if I can get it out there, one of your guests a couple of weeks ago mentioned something and I'm like, yes, that happened to me too. That's exactly how I felt when something happened. So when I'm listening to the show, I get excited. I'm talking back to the podcast, you know, and uh, you do such a great job when you, when you put this all together, then you present it to us. We can relate to the experience because we either had that experience, somebody felt that experience and shared it with people. And it, it brings closure to a lot of, um, Instances that people have had, they couldn't explain or at least feel like somebody was going to believe them. Now we get to share it, and we have a little bit of closure. That's that's you're doing a great job. It's phenomenal that you can do something like this. I appreciate you know? that, man. I really do. I I enjoy hearing the stories. That's that's something that I've always been. That's just me my entire life. Like my like I said so many times in the show, and I'll always say it. My grandfather experienced a lot of miraculous things throughout his life, and as a kid growing up, he would randomly share just a little part of a story, things like that. And I was always so fascinated, but I came, I came up in the era with my grandfather and my parents. It's like when you're a little kid, it's like, you know, kids are meant to be seen and not heard. So you, you listen, but don't go, you know, asking questions and all that stuff. That's just kind of how it was when I was real little and stuff. But, uh, I, I wish I would have, you know, asked more questions 
uh, as I got older. And I had the opportunity to do that as I got older. But, uh, you know, it's just, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And uh, as a kid growing up and, and seeing that stuff and hearing that stuff, uh, I, my curiosity was always there. And now I'm fortunate. I'm very fortunate to be in a position where I have a lot of people coming forward and sharing these types of stories that I heard as a kid growing up. And I loved hearing them. And now I get to hear them and ask the questions and just be curious and uh, pick your brain and and draw out the story. And I just love doing it, man. Um, you know, I want to get into one more story with you. You have more experiences. Now, I want to sure. I want to say this at this point. I want to say to you. I want to say to the audience. Uh, this is my own personal opinion, uh, and, and I haven't even told you this yet. But there are people out there that experience crazy, crazy stuff in their life. And there are other people out there who don't experience anything crazy throughout their entire lives. I don't know what the difference is. I don't know if there is a difference. But to me, in my mind, there are certain people out there that are prone to experience paranormal, supernatural activity in their life. And reading through your email, hearing you talk, you you seem like somebody who is very much prone to these kinds of thing, things. And uh, I, I say that out front because what we're about to get into and stuff is another pretty crazy story. And um, I want to get into it, though, before we have to wrap up the show today, because uh, this is definitely something that I think is worth talking about. Because once again, you weren't the only one who saw what you saw. And so with that said, would you be willing to go into talking about seeing this Bigfoot creature in your backyard? Again, you saw these things. All these different things happened throughout your life. And so far, as as far as I know, all this stuff that you shared tonight so far has happened in Rhode Island. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a crazy little state, you know? It's a, it's a beautiful state, too. But the things that's happened to me, and, and I've gotten permission from my friend that was with me, uh, as long as I don't use his name. But he verified everything that happened, and we talked about it, and he almost started crying just thinking about it. He had to go back there. You know, in in his mind, to experience what he experienced. So, I mean, I got his permission, but I won't use his name. But and uh, and the other people involved, I talked to them too, and they all confirmed, yeah, something happened back there. It's just pretty amazing. I mean, looking back, sitting here comfortably in my in my uh, living room, talking to you, it was pretty damn amazing. Technically, I was kind of blessed to even uh, <laughs> to even have an experience, to even have that experience. Looking back on it. You know, so yeah, if you, if you like, I can start getting into that. Absolutely, you can definitely go into it and uh, go ahead and share with us what you experienced and what you saw with this Bigfoot situation. All right, uh, here we go. This is back in nineteen um, nineties, uh, nineteen ninety eight, uh, probably. We were pretty close to. It. We just bought a house, my wife and I, and uh, we were pretty excited. Uh, being a church, I was doing a lot of work inside the house, never really doing anything outside of the house. This one particular Friday night, uh, my friend and his wife comes over. They wanted to help us celebrate uh, that we just bought this house. And uh, they brought over some, uh, uh, my friend and I, we drink uh, Grand Marnier when they're celebrating. He brought over some cigars, and the girls are talking and laughing. I said, well, let's go outside. And I'll uh, we'll smoke the cigars out there and, you know, have a couple of drinks. Now, uh, we open up the slider. There's no steps there. There's no deck in back to the side yet because I haven't really done too much uh, work on the house. I'm going back. It's totally dark in back of my house. Now, just to give you a little bit of uh, the apography of the area, you've got to picture an M, okay? My house is on the right-hand side of the M. There's a house to the left-hand side of the M inside of that little box. Then there's a house in back of me. And a house in back next to that. So there's four houses, but there's no fence in between those houses. Okay, Kadish. Now, <laughs> we were all out there. We got the cigars. We like the cigars. We have the cognac and I use. We're laughing and we're joking. All of a sudden, I have a, I have a dog. My dog's name is Rolex, by the way. She's my watchdog. Awesome. So, um, yeah, <laughs> everybody loves, even the vet. Uh, but this is a dog that takes no guff you know this is a dog that really it's half child half lab 
has a black tongue, and this dog is, is really a protector. For some reason, we're laughing, joking. The dog crouches down, and the, all of a sudden, she started a slow growl, and there's a ridge on the back of her fur. And I'm looking at it, and I'm saying to myself, that's highly peculiar. And then I look at my buddy, and he's kind of like transfixed looking at the fence. The dog's looking at the fence. He's looking at the fence. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? Finally, a chill ran through my body. A chill, a chill of fear, dread of uh, danger. I, I can't explain the, I couldn't express what I felt. And it hovered there for a long time. I, I was frozen. I couldn't think of anything that I could do at that particular moment to break this, to, to break the moment. And I could see my friend starting to shake. So the only thing that popped into my head, but it's like a voice that spoke behind me saying, say it in the name of Jesus. And I said, straight out, I said, in the name of Jesus, um, I do not want you here. Uh, you are not welcome. Leave. This thing, I can only express why I'm talking to you. I'm getting chills down my back. Blacker than black. Again, there's no lights back there. Blacker. God, they're black. Stood straight up. Not even hard. Just quietly stood straight up. And it was this thing. I couldn't. The mass that this thing was. I couldn't, I can't, I can't express. And then it walked. It's on the other side of the fence now. It walked. But when it walked, it thundered. It was a boom, 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 boom. And for a few more times, I felt the ground tremble. And then the motion detector, my other neighbor's house, with the M that's in the set to my left, it's a six foot high fence. The motion detector went on and it lit up the backside of this thing. And it was black hair, no neck, just shoulders. But the girth of this thing was unbelievable. And it's just boom. And it went off into the shadows and then stopped. And that was it. I'm saying to myself, what the hell just happened? And then uh, my dog started to come around a little bit. She came over to me like in a military crawl. She got on her back. She peed on herself. My friend dropped his glass and his cigar. And he started shaking very, very badly. I grabbed him. I said, let's go inside. And we walked inside. And I confirmed this with my ex-wife. I happened to see her today at a family reunion. And I couldn't even finish telling her, and she goes, oh yeah, you guys walked in, white as a ghost. You, my stomach dropped. I had to run to the bathroom. I'm not afraid to say that. My stomach would drop. I was just so damn scared. My friend sat down. He was just shaking. He couldn't even think of talking. And my dog, she just got right underneath the table and stayed there. And I'm saying, once I got my composure back, what the hell just happened? What the hell just happened? Logically, I I saw something, so I physically saw something. I felt the ground tremble, and I heard the, I heard it hit as it was walking, and then the motion detector, which is an inanimate object, registered it, and the light came on. So that tells me that there's another confirmation. Something happened back there. So I asked my friend the next day, what do you think? Because they had to leave. He was so, he just had to go right to bed. He was so shaken up. The next day, I asked him, what do you think it was? He goes, well, it was probably a bear. And I go, bear? There's no bears in Rhode Island. Come on. Come on. What do you think it was? I'm trying to get him to say Bigfoot. He wouldn't go it. He wouldn't do it. So it had to be a bear. This thing walked very smoothly. It wasn't jerk. Like, I've seen bears. I believe me, uh, Tony. I, I Googled it. I've seen videos trying to watch bears on two legs walking. And they're jerky when they walk. This thing was smooth. 
almost like gliding when it walked, but very heavy on its footstep. Now, here's something. Knowing that I was going to talk to you, me and a buddy of mine did a little experiment. We got some heavy weights off a six-foot ladder. And this happened back in the 90s. So this is recently what we were doing. To move these heavy weights off the ladder to make it thud on the ground to see if I could replicate at all the feeling I had when it was walking, when this thing was walking. Um, we got up to almost uh, about 300 pounds. Then it just started becoming ridiculous for two guys to try to do this. And, and I could feel the ground shake, but it didn't have the same thud. But I did feel the ground tremble, you know, slightly. So this thing had to be a little bit over 400 pounds, I'm guessing, really to hit the ground to make that tremble, boom, and you felt the vibration. There was a strong, it demanded respect, boom, 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 as it walked away. And then I set off the motion detector. It's like, damn it. Now I'm thinking back on it. I was pretty jazzed that it even happened. It's like, oh, man, I wouldn't want it to happen again. Don't get me wrong. But to experience that, it, it's just, it's mind-blowing. Because it, it, that was a six-foot high fence, and it was taller than six feet. If I had to give it a height, I'd say about eight and a half. Again, once, maybe nine feet. I don't, I don't know why that. It came up again, but I, this, it was a tall entity because his elbows was slightly below the six foot fence line. And again, I only saw the back. I never saw the face. I didn't see any glowing red eyes or anything like that. I just saw the back of it. But the other thing is too, it left when I when I invoked the name of Jesus on it. It it didn't obey my command, but it kind of like it got up. I said, "Okay, I'm out of here." It didn't feel. Um, like I needed to leave in a hurry, but it did, it did leave. And I thought about that a few times too. Was it already behind there? We came out, started it, and it, and it kind of like squatted down behind the fence waiting for us to leave, and it was going to go on its way. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know this idea. I still rationalize a lot of different things that, um, that I chew on just to see if, it's, if there's another angle I haven't thought of yet. It was pretty interesting. Looking back on it, my friend, uh, he said, yeah. He says, I don't say it was Bigfoot, but it was something that was of colossal size. And then I talked to my ex, and she was nice enough, and we talked, and she goes, you guys were just, like, out of it. What is a ghost? Again, I had to run to the bathroom. I had my stomach dropped. And he was in, a, like, a nervous, like, nervous wreck that he had to go home. And, you know, we're not small guys. I'm 5'8", but I'm rugged. I'm in construction. And normally things don't scare me as much as that thing scared me. So it's uh, to, to, to feel that and to experience that, sitting down in a comfortable spot, it was awesome. It was awesome. Being at that spot at that right particular moment, I was terrified. I, I was a I, I fear of dread, of death. It was just, um, was, is there a way out of this? Until I heard that voice. And I think that's the only thing that saved me. That there was an angel looking over my shoulders that particular night. This thing could have busted the fence with no problem. If it really wanted to. But it was in a non-aggressive mode and just walked away. And that's basically what happened. You know, it's... Uh, and that's basically what happened. Yeah. It's... Uh, yeah. <sighs> Well, I'll tell you what, man, I, I definitely, uh, again, the parallels, I, I, you, your, your experiences are jam packed with parallels. Uh, people say all the time that, you know, if there's demonic possession or demonic oppression in your life to rebuke you in the name of Jesus and they have to obey. Well, why is it that if these creatures are so, you know, natural, wood ape kind of animals why is it that they leave when somebody rebukes them in the name of jesus uh you're not the only person that has had that experience uh and so there's a consistency here there's people experiencing the same exact thing and having the same results uh i'm curious how much are you into these topics? Now, I know you said you're into the paranormal and things like that. 
uh, when it comes to like Bigfoot, do you look into that at all? Or are you not really uh, in, into the whole topic of Bigfoot and figuring out what it is? Well, I'm, I'm into the topic because right, I'm curious to find out what it is. To me, it's a solid object. Once again, I'm leaning towards interdimensional. I'll, I'll tell you why, Tony, because it went so far out that once it went out of the light, it stopped. And I was just there holding my breath, thinking, is it going to come back? Is it going to attack us? This thing could walk to the other side and come in because that side of the fence wasn't fixed yet. Again, it was like an open M on the bottom. So it could have walked all the way around and came in and attacked us. It stopped. So I think it's leaning towards an interdimensional being. I mean, there's, there's more on this world and this earth that we could have a dream of. And if we put ourselves on a box, we're never going to experience the wonders that are out there. So I try not to be limited in anything of my thinking. I try to be open. There are some things that I just kind of like, all right, okay, all right. You know, it's not that I'm not open to it, but I'd have to, I have to think about it more. But I don't honestly give it a fair chance. I don't give it my time. But other things such as Bigfoot, um, extraterrestrials, things like that, I even ghosts. I, I kind of look at things and say, there's a strong possibility that there's a lot out there that we don't know about. Again, we're interdimensional. Getting back to the Bible just for a second, not to continue going with that route, but even Gideon, who was out in the field doing the wheat, an angel appeared to him out of nowhere, you know, to, to tell him that he was going to lead the army. And, um, you know, where did this angel come from? Like, he, if he had Gideon were to saw him come in, him and his mom were way out in the field. They would have saw the angel come in. Oh, there's an angel over there. Come on, come on. But they didn't. It just appeared out of nowhere. So, I mean, this thing appearing and reappearing is totally feasible. And I have my own theories about that, but it's, I don't, I don't put it past it, but it's an interdimensional, solid, but interdimensional being. No, I, to be honest with you, I, I do, I understand where you're coming from and I do draw similar conclusions and, uh, my my conclusions come from more of a supernatural aspect as well, uh, where, you know, when it comes to these creatures, whether it's Dogman or Bigfoot, uh, you know, if you read these these extra canonical books that, that aren't in the Bible, or I should say they're not in the modern Bible. They like Enoch was in the Bible at one point. Uh uh I know Enoch is in the Ethiopian Bible. Uh, to this right. day, yes, and yep. and that dates back way back. Uh, but even like the apocrypha, the apocrypha was taken out of the Bible in 1881. That's not that long ago. Mm. In 18 in 1881, Mormonism was already in existence. So like, and Mormonism mm. is a new religion. Like that's a newer religion when you talk about the grand scheme of time. And so Mormonism was actually in existence when they took out the Apocrypha out of the Bible. And so it's a very, it's a very interesting thing. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. What I was trying to say is, uh, you know, these fallen angels that, you know, came and they married and had sex with women and they bore children and the Nephilim and giants like Goliath and things like that. Uh, in these extra canonical books, it describes uh, the fallen angels doing the same exact thing to animals. And even in the book of Enoch, like it says it clearly, 100% clearly in the book of Giants. But there's a lot of people out there that say, you know, well, you really should, you really can't pay attention to the book of Giants and these other books because of this, that, and the other, and you don't know how accurate they are. I would love, as far as Enoch goes, I'm very, very much convinced that Enoch was written by Enoch, the Enoch of the Bible that was taken into heaven by God who never died. I'm very, very convinced that it was written by him. And that said, in that book, I believe it's chapter seven, it talks about the fallen angels sinning against the animals, against the plants. What do you think that means? You know what I mean? Like, what do you think that yeah, means? Like, no, I, like, like, what, what, like, yeah, without coming right out and saying that they were having an incest, but not, not right. incest, but they were having relationships with these things. Which then, if you go into the Egyptian culture, you see all these half dogs, half wolves, half bulls, a centaur, whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, right. 
creatures and you wonder how did they do were they doing genetic engineering? No, it was all these creatures that were doing you know um <laughs> unnatural things. Absolutely, miscegenation. And so uh I mean with all that said, to bring it back full circle, if that's possible, if it actually happened, then the offspring it's not that far of a stretch to say that they might have supernatural capabilities, like interdimensional mm-hmm. capabilities. And on top of that, if they came out of, uh, if they came into existence outside of the will of God and they are hybrid creatures, then rebuking in the name of Jesus would make sense because in these extra canonical books, it describes that demons uh, come from the dead spirits of the Nephilim. And so when you're rebuking a demon, uh, according to these books, you're re- you're rebuking a dead spirit of the Nephilim who are craving to inhabit a body because they once had bodies. And so when it comes to this idea of Bigfoot, you know, rebuking a, a Bigfoot in the name of Jesus doesn't sound that crazy when you put it in those contexts. You know what I mean? I'm not saying what I just, mm. all the stuff I just said is 100% true. I do lean in those directions, but you know, it, it would make sense if it, that was true that you would have the result that you had. I, I think so too, because I, I had uh, an experience where um, at night I was asleep and I felt that there was some kind of entity on me. Um, it wasn't frozen, but it was <laughs> for another story. But I was, uh, I said, in the name of Jesus, leave, you're not welcome here. And whatever it was, this is when I was with my second wife, but whatever it was, it left. And she says, how did you know how to do that? And then I just kind of looked, and you already knowing the story, I just kind of like looked at it like, you know, it's not go there. And uh, it, it seems like it's something more powerful than our own can it is out there. You know, and God's name is, is very, very powerful and using it properly. You know, it, it, he looks at the call upon the name of the Lord, you know, and shall be saved. It's uh, give us that strength to and confidence in him that when we're in danger, you know, in our own ability, we can't, we're not going to help ourselves out. But with his help, his hand is going to be there to, to pull us out of that, that situation. So I believe in that 100%. That it's definitely a different entity. Um, fallen angel or whatever the case could be because these things don't die as far as I'm concerned from what I've read from what I gather different things that I've heard different shows uh, uh, that I've heard on yours you know different people giving their input I'm starting to get a whole big picture of what's going on it may not be the right picture but I'm getting a picture nonetheless you know try to be pretty real with that um but it's it, it is interesting it's fascinating I think too a lot of the stuff is it is kind of like when we feel that we're tired. That's when we're most vulnerable. I've noticed that too in different talk shows and different people sharing their experiences. They're half asleep and something happens. They see a vision or a spirit or they hear a voice and it's always when they're in. So it's like when their God's down, that's when they're most vulnerable. You know, that's what I think from what I've been listening to. Yeah. 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 There, so. I mean, the, I, as far as I'm concerned, there really isn't a whole lot of right or wrong answers when it comes to this stuff because uh, we really, we really haven't scratched the surface as to what our knowledge is of these types of experiences that people are having. Uh, and so, uh, man, I'll tell you, Angelo, you got some, you got some stories, brother. And uh, I know we <laughs> we didn't even scratch the surface tonight, but uh, I, if it's okay with you, I would like to bring you back on some time for a patron episode to sh- share some of your other stories and stuff. Because uh, you know, dude, you got some stuff that uh, you've experienced at your life, and uh, you're a great person to talk to. I've had a great time talking with you tonight. And so, if it's okay with you, I'd love to bring you back on some time. Sure, I'd love to. I it's, uh, I got a lot of stuff, and uh, you're great talking with. You know, it's uh, it's always a pleasure on this end too. You know, you're you're an awesome guy, and it's uh, my pleasure to know you. Thank you. Oh, right on, man. I, I I do appreciate you saying that and stuff. And you know, you being a patron and stuff, you definitely have access to me and stuff. So feel free to you know keep in touch, shoot me an email, you know, all that fun stuff. But uh, thanks for coming on and sharing some of these experiences tonight, man. Thank you for having me, Tony. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. God bless. Through that song, 
guess what? You get some extra material because now it's confession time with Tony. That's right. I had something happen to me this week that I want to share with you, but only because you made it through the entire episode. Some bonus material. Who doesn't like that? So Friday night, I was driving down the turnpike going back to my terminal. You guys know I'm a truck driver. I had just left my last stop. I did a quick live Instagram video. And then when I was done with that, I left the delivery and I was heading back down the turnpike to go back to the terminal to retire for the weekend because I was tired. And I was driving down the turnpike and you guys know I live in the Philadelphia area. And so there's a lot of planes in the sky. We have the Philly airport. It's a very large airport. And when you see these planes coming in to the airport, at night, you see these lights in the sky and they're always evenly spaced. They're always like, they seem like they have this perfect distance between them. And it's usually like four, five, six, eight, 10, 12 lights in a row. You see them for miles. And when you first see, you're like, oh my gosh, we're getting invaded. But it's not really anything big. It's just an actual plane flying into the Philadelphia airport. However, that said, this was not a plane. So When I was driving down the turnpike, you see these lights in the sky, everything's normal. And then I started seeing this light flashing. It was like a steady blue light. And then it was a red light. It was flashing in a perfect rhythm. Beep, 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 beep. It was continuing to do that. And so I thought it was just a plane. You know what I mean? Whatever. You see blue lights in the sky, red lights in the sky, it's planes, whatever. As I'm driving down the turnpike, I'm going towards it. And it doesn't seem to be getting away from me. I seem to be getting a little bit closer to it. I'm thinking, okay, whatever. I'm actually not even thinking about it. I'm listening to music or whatever I was doing, probably podcasting something. And as I get closer and closer, I start thinking, wow, that thing really hasn't moved a whole lot. And so I start thinking my next thought, which was a helicopter. You know, you're in the Philadelphia area. If there's a traffic jam, the uh, the helicopter goes out to video it. Sometimes the police use it to enforce speed, you know, whatever. It, I was thinking it was just going to be a helicopter. So I'm getting closer and closer and closer to it. Now, we're talking about two, three miles of me driving and seeing this thing before I actually came up on it. So it was a pretty good distance away without moving away, without going anywhere. It was just hovering. And so as I was getting closer and closer to it, I started realizing that this was either a helicopter or something different. And it still wasn't registering in my head until I was literally passing by this thing on the turnpike. I I look out the side of my window, my driver's side window, and I look up and this thing is about... I'd say about two to 300 feet up in the sky. The lights are blinking, like I said. It, it actually had a, a blue steady light, a red light that was blinking, and it had, I think, like a white light that was either constant or blinking as well, but I think it was blinking. I leaned towards blinking, just not in the same rhythmic pattern as the red light. That's what I think. I didn't really pay much attention to the lights because I just thought it was a plane or a helicopter. But as I was passing by it, I look out my driver's side window, And you know how when you look up in the sky, when it's dark out, but you can still see like either it's moonlighting or whatever, but the sky's not pitch black. And that's what Friday night was like for me. So as I'm I'm passing by this thing in the sky that I assumed was a helicopter, I quickly realized it wasn't a helicopter because it wasn't in the shape of a helicopter. I've never seen anything like this before in my entire life. I'm looking at this thing, the lights aren't changing, but I see the body because the body of whatever this was, was darker than the sky around it. And I don't know if anybody else saw this thing, but it was plain as day to me. I look up and I see a V, a straight up letter V in the sky. Only one side of the V was longer than the other, almost like a check mark. You know how like when you make a check mark and you it, like I'm left-handed. So when I make a check mark, my shorter part of the check mark is on the left side. And that's what this was in the sky. The left side was shorter and then it shoots up to the right and that was longer. And it was just hovering there. It wasn't flying. It wasn't going up and down. It was just hovering. And I was like, what in the world is that? I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. It was clearly not a helicopter, clearly not a plane. And the fact that it took me about two miles, two, three miles to even get up onto it. And I saw it from that distance. I don't think it was a drone because when I'm looking at this thing, it was big. 
it was big enough that it was two, 300 feet in the air and I could see it very, very clearly. And so is it a drone? No, I don't think it was a drone. And if it was a drone, it would have had a, I would have had to have some kind of real depth perception, uh, flaw in the whole scenario because of the distance that I was driving. But also when I was passing it, it looked like it was two, 300 feet in the air and I could see the details of it. If it was a drone, it probably would have had to be a lot closer to me for me to see that detail. And so I really don't think it was a drone. And plus, I've never seen a drone like that. It, it literally was, I won't even call it a V. It was like a check mark in the sky. It was unbelievable. I, I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. And it wasn't flying. It was just hovering there, two, 300 feet up in the sky, right off the side of the turnpike in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Unbelievable. Absolutely un- Unbelievable. But I wanted to share that with you guys because you made it through the entire episode and you listened to the music and here you are getting some bonus content. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching The Confessionals on YouTube. If you like what you heard, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, and hit the like button. That would be a great help to me. And if you want more of The Confessionals on a weekly basis, every Thursday I come out with a special show just for members on my website. So if you want to check that out, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, and become a member today. And every Thursday, you'll get a new show and you can binge on previous shows, which there's almost a 100 of them. So if you love the show, go ahead and check it out. But thank you very much for being here on YouTube and checking out the channel.